All right, we'll begin our look at meiosis by talking about reproduction in general. So, multicellular organisms can reproduce in one of two ways, and that is sexual or asexual reproduction. Mitosis produces identical or cloned cells, and it's asexual. Sometimes the tissue of one plant can be the beginning of a whole new plant. That's like when you take a cutting or a stem off of a plant, you let it grow roots in water, and then you can plant it later as its own independent organism. That is asexual reproduction. There was an amazing orchid breeder in South Carolina that bred its orchids through cloning so that once they had the perfect looking hybrid, every offspring from that would be identical. So plant clones are actually very, very common, not at all unusual to see plants reproducing asexually. Most multicellular organisms, though, outside of plants, reproduce by sexual reproduction, and that involves meiosis, so splitting the parent cell's genetic material in half and combining it with a second parent so that every generation gets a new version of the scrambled gene combinations that are possible when you half the genetic material and then recombine it with another individual. That increases the diversity and it increases the chances that some of your offspring will survive long enough to reproduce. It also increases the odds that the parents' genes will propagate in future generations. That's all getting into natural selection, but natural selection is possible in part because of meiosis. So once again, meiosis is halving or cutting the genetic material in half and increasing genetic diversity by the combining of two parents. A few terms to note, be looking out for them on the next slide. They'll be in red just like they are right now. That is homologous chromosomes, homolog, somatic cells, diploid, haploid, gamete, fertilization, and zygote. Our somatic or body cells are not specialized for reproduction. The gametes are the specialized reproductive cells, and those are also known as the eggs and the sperm. The major difference in these cells is whether they are diploid or haploid. Somatic cells contain two copies of each chromosome, so they are diploid. The two copies are called homologous chromosomes because they contain the same type of gene, but not necessarily the same variant, such as a gene for blue eyes and a gene for brown eyes. These chromosomes are sometimes called homologs, especially during meiosis when they are replicated and look like those classic X forms. All humans have 22 pairs of homologous chromosomes. These are the autosomes, or non-sex chromosomes. The sex chromosomes in a woman are homologous, those are the two X's, but men have an X and a Y as their sex chromosomes. So we would say those are non-homologous. They do not have the same genes on them. For example, the X carries genes for male pattern baldness and color blindness, while the Y chromosome does not have those genes. Gametes are haploid cells. They only have one copy of each chromosome. We call that haploid number N. Thus, diploid becomes 2N because it has twice as many chromosomes. So gametes can have one copy of each of the autosomes, that's chromosomes 1 through 22, and they have one sex chromosome. So in humans, that's a total of 23 chromosomes in a haploid cell and 46 in a diploid cell. The gametes are formed by meiosis in a process called gametogenesis. The diploid cell that egg and sperm form is called a zygote, and fertilization is the process of an egg and sp sperm cell fusing. And yet again, that zygote is diploid. So you've got haploid gametes, a diploid zygote, and a diploid adult.